Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question, find peak element. Alright, so in this question, a peak element is an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. So we're going to be given an integer array called nums and our goal is to find a peak element and return its index. If the array contains multiple peaks, we return the index to any of the peaks. So the question itself is really simple, but where it gets complicated is the fact that they want us to find a solution in big O log n time. So let's first come up with a solution in linear time or big O of n time, and then we can come up with the other solution. So by itself, um, there's three possible ways that we can have a peak. So let's look at the first condition. So we can, we're going to kind of have two edge cases. Uh, so the first one, is going to be when we have an array which is in ascending order. So let's take an example of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it doesn't have to be an arithmetic sequence. What I mean by that, it doesn't have to have common differences, but in this case, it is an ascending value. So what is the peak in this going to be? So the peak over here is going to be whatever is at the very last index, which in this case is 5, and that's at the index 4. So we would return the index 4. And the reason for that is, let's look at the neighbors of 5. There's only one neighbor, which is 4. And obviously, 5 is greater than 4. So this is kind of one edge case that we have. And uh, let's just kind of draw it like this. So you can kind of think of all the values increasing. And they might increase at different rates, but they are increasing. And finally, we have a, a large value on, on top over here, which we end up returning. OK, so this is for ascending. So now we have another edge case is when uh, that's when we have descending values. So let's take the same example, but the opposite. So let's say we have five, four, three, two, and one. All right. So in this case, the peak is going to be five, right? And this is going to be at the index zero. So we return zero. And the reason for that is the neighbors of five are four. There's only one neighbor and five is greater than four, obviously. So that's what we end up returning. 5 is the only peak that exists in this case. So in this case, uh, we have a value over here and then keeps going down at whatever rate, right? So in this case, this is the only peak, which is the first value, and in ascending, the only peak is over here. Now we have a case in between, right? So you can kind of think of this, uh, think of this as the more common case, and this is where we have a local uh, maximum, okay? So in this case, as you can see, these are the global maximums in both of these cases. So a local maximum is only when the immediate neighbors, for example, are actually smaller than the actual number. So uh, how that would look like is something like this, right? So to the left of it, it's decreasing, to the right of it, it's decreasing. But the value itself is greater than what's on the left and greater than what's on the right. So we might have several local maximums, but uh, let's just take a look at one example. So let's say we have 1, 2, 5 comma, three, comma, four, right? So in this case, we actually have two possible answers to our solution. Now, the first one is going to be five. So let's look at the neighbors of five. So we have a value of two, and five is greater than two. So that's one thing that's correct. And now let's look at the right, which is three. So in this case, five is greater than three as well. So this means that five is a possible p. And we're going to return its index, which in this case is two. So we return the index 2. And another possible peak is going to be 4. So in this case, uh, 4 is at the index of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is at the index 4, and we're going to return 4 in this case. Since compared to its neighbors, it only has one neighbor, which is 3, 4 is greater. So these are kind of the three conditions that we have. And we can kind of just look for this in a simple loop. So let's just see what that looks like. So this over here is going to be our big O of n solution, and we're going to have a for loop. So let's just do for x in range length of numbers, where we're iterating through all of the numbers. And remember, over here we need to take care of all of the cases, right? And there's the, and the two extreme cases, which is we might have a peak at the zero index or the last index. Okay, so now keeping that in mind, we're going to have a if condition. It's going to be a long one. So the first thing we need to make sure is we need to check whether it is a neighbor or no, whether it's larger than both of its neighbors. So let's just assume that. So to do that, we first go to nums. We're going to go to the index x and check if this index over here 
is greater than whatever is to the left of it. So to do that, we're going to do nums x minus 1. Okay, so that's one condition. And the other condition we check is, so we know it's greater than something to the left of it. We also need to check if it's greater than whatever is on the right of it. So to do that, we're going to do nums x is greater than nums x plus 1. Okay, so this over here tells us that it's greater than what's on the left and what's on the right. And if this is true, oh, sorry. And if this is true over here, we can just directly return this index, which is x. But there's few conditions that we didn't actually account for. What about the condition where uh, x is at the index 0? So when x is at the 0th index, we can't actually check for something to the left of it. So that we're going to have an exception here. So if x is equal to 0 or this condition over here. Now the same way, when we were at the very ending or at the last index, we can't check for whatever is at the right of it. So the condition we have there is if x is equal to length of nums minus 1 or the condition that we defined over here. So if this is true, we directly return x since that is a valid p. So this over here is pretty simple, but again, we want a log n solution. So let's see how we can kind of optimize this to get a log n solution. And the way we're actually going to do that is by using a binary search. So let's try to understand how exactly we can even use a binary search for this. So it might be a little bit hard to understand why or how we can actually use a binary search because normally we use a binary search for areas which are already sorted. But in this case, that's not necessarily the case, right? So what exactly are we searching for? So in this case, it's pretty simple. We're searching for a neighbor. And this is exactly how we're going to do it. So let's just kind of go through an example. Let's use this as an example and I'll kind of explain it as we're going through it. So as with every binary search, we're going to have to define our search space. So the search space is going to be the entire area. So we're going to have L or the uh, left part starting at the index 0 and we're going to have our index or we're going to have a pointer R starting at the very last index. Okay. And let me just also label the indices here. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Perfect. So now in this case, what exactly is our goal going to be? So what we're going to do is we're going to find out, go to our mid index. And the way we do that is going to be by L plus R divided by 2. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have 4 plus 0 divided by 2. And that tells us that the mid value is at the um, second index. So in this case, what we do is we keep going to the mid value and we check if mid over here is a neighbor. So if, uh, sorry, uh, if mid is a p, not a neighbor, sorry. And the way we actually check if mid is a p is by the same condition we have over here. So this is the exact same condition that we're going to use. So over here, we're going to check is the 5 a p. So 5 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 3. So in this case, 5 is a p and we're good to go. Okay. And in that case, we're just directly return mid. So that's pretty simple. So now let's just change it up a little bit so we have another condition to work with. So let me just change the area. All right, so now let's say we have this as our area, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0. So in this case, we can obviously tell that this over here is the peak, but how do we actually get to it? So over here, we have this as the mid value, okay? So this over here is mid. And now what exactly do we do? How do we know which direction do we move? Do we look at the left of mid or to the right of mid? And the way we actually figure that out is by looking at its neighbors one by one. So first, the first step is checking if mid is a p. So in this case, 3 is greater than 2, so that's one condition. But 3 is less than 4, so that means that mid is not a p. So now we move on, so we have two options, right? And the two options are pretty simple. We can either move to the left or we can move to the right. Now, what is the condition to move to either the left or the right. And in this case, that condition is going to be based upon which value is greater, okay? And what exactly I mean by that is over here, what we're going to do is we're first going to look at the left, okay? So let's look at the left of mid. So this is the value at the first index. And we're going to check if whatever is at the first index, so if uh, in this case we have 2, so if 2 is greater than 3. And obviously this is not true. 2 is not greater than 3. So what that tells us is that if we move to the left, we are not going to find a p. And the reason for that is because in this case, so let's say we do end up moving to 
number two, we don't care what's on the left because we already know that its right neighbor is greater than it. So the other way to find a peak is now we look at the right. So we know to the left that that was not a valid option. So now we go to the right. So we go to the third index here and we check if its value is greater than three. So in this case, is four greater than three? The answer is yes. So what that tells us is that this value right here can be a possible peak and we need to search in that area. And the reason we know that is because this four is greater than one of its neighbors already. And now we just need to check if it's greater than the other neighbor as well. Okay, so now let's actually uh, continue with the step. So let's actually move L. So now our search space is gonna be over here. So it's gonna be mid plus one. So L is gonna be here. Now we find a new mid value. So that's gonna be three plus four, seven. Seven divided by two is 3.5, but we round it down, so we take three. So mid is over here. And in this case over here, mid is a P. Four is greater than three, and a four is greater than zero. That's perfect. Now let's actually move back a step, and let's look at another option, okay? So let's say at this exact place, instead of four being the peak, let's just change it up. And let's say we have five over here and then six, okay? So in this case, what exactly would happen? So this would be R, and let's do the same thing. We, again, we would not move to the left, but we would move to the right. And again, our reasoning for that is because the immediate neighbor for three, which is four over here, is actually greater than um, the mid value itself. So that means there could possibly be a peak value in this search space to the right of it. And in the worst case condition, we might have something, an ascending value, where the last value is going to be the peak. So let's just keep doing that. So over here, we have mid, and we're gonna move the left pointer. So it's gonna be mid plus one, and it's going to be over here. Now we look for the new mid, so this is the new middle value, and we check if this mid, mid over here is a peak. So five is greater than four, but five is less than six. So it is not a peak as well. And now we look to the left of it, okay? So we look to the left of five, and in this case, the left value is not greater than five. So that means there could not be a possible peak over there. Okay, so keeping that in mind, now we look to the right of five. So the right of five is six. And uh, since we have six over here, that tells us that six could possibly be a peak. So that means that we need to move our search space to the right of it since six is greater than five. So now we're gonna move L to mid plus one. So in this case, um, L and R are in the same place. So the mid value is also going to be exactly over here. So if you just want to see it, um, this would be the fifth index. So five plus five, 10, 10 divided by two is five. So mid is also at the same index. And now six over here is a P. So now we look at the neighbors of six. And in this case, there's only one neighbor, which is five. And six is greater than five. So that means that it is a P and we're going to return the index five. So hopefully you do understand what we're doing. And this uh, applies the same way to when we're moving to the left. So first we find the mid value, then we check if it's a peak. And if it is a peak, we're gonna return that a mid value directly. But if it is not a peak, then we're gonna move our left or right pointer. And we're gonna move the left pointer if uh, the value to the left of mid, so if mid minus one's value is greater than mid. And if that's not the case, then we're going to move our right pointer. And the condition for that is if mid plus one is greater than mid. Okay, so let's see this in code. And I think it should be easier to understand uh, with the code. All right, so over here, I'm just going to leave this, con uh, this if condition over here since we're going to reuse it. So now let's just get rid of this and we're going to define our two pointers. So we're going to have L and R. So L is gonna be the left pointer starting at zero, and R is gonna be at the very uh, last index. So that's just gonna be nums minus one. Okay, the length of nums minus one, sorry. So now we're gonna go in a while loop, and what we're gonna keep going into it as long as left is less than or equal to R. So now in this case, the first thing we need to do is we need to find what is mid. So we do that by doing left plus R, and then into uh, integer division divided by two. Sorry, it's supposed to be R, okay. So now that we have the mid value, we need to check if mid is a neighbor. So if mid is, a, no, sorry, not neighbor, if mid is a peak. And we do that by using this condition over here. 
the exact same condition. I'm not changing anything except that wherever we have x, it's now going to be min. Okay. So this is the condition we have here. And if this is true, this means that uh, mid is a peak, so we return that, okay? So in this case, we're directly going to return mid. Now, what if this is not the case? So if mid is not a peak, we have two options, okay? And the two options are look to the left or the right, okay? Those are the two options that we have. So now let's see um, about looking to the left, okay? So searching the left. And the condition for that, so we're going to have else if, is if the left value to it, so that's going to be nums, and then it's going to be mid minus 1, is greater than nums mid. So if this condition over here is true, then our search space is going to be everything to the left of mid. So in this case, we're going to move, move r to mid minus 1. Okay, so I forgot to add one small thing. So we actually might have a condition where we are at the zeroth index. So when we are at the zero index, we can't look for anything on the left of it, right? We're going to get an index error. So to actually account for that, we're going to have a condition that mid has to be greater than zero and this condition over here has to be true. So that just makes sure that when we're at the zero index, we're not looking to anything at the left of it. And one more thing uh, just to add on to this is when we are at the zero index, the, there's only one neighbor that we need to look at, which is what is to the right of it, okay? So yeah, that should be it for this. And now let's see what is the condition for when we need to search to the right, okay? So in this case, else if, and over here, we're going to go to nums, and then mid plus one, the right value, has to be greater than nums mid. And the same way had how we had mid is greater than zero over here, we need to check that we're not at the last index. So if we are at the last index, there's nothing to the right of it. So to ensure we don't get an error for that, we need to check if mid is less than the length of nums minus one. And the reason we're doing minus one, the length of nums starts counting at one while indexing starts at zero. Okay, so that and this condition have to be true. And if that is met, then that means we need to look at the right search space. And to do that, we're going to move the left pointer to mid plus one. So we we'll submit this. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So this over here is going to be a big O of log n. Uh, time complexity and it's going to have constant space. So hopefully, yeah, this video did help and thanks a lot for watching.